everyone. Welcome back to App Inventor's Hour of Code. Stop, 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 Enough stop, of that. Stop me. The next app we build is going to be a game app. You're talking this time? No, sorry. Let's get going on this silent app. To get started, log on to App Inventor and click New Project. Name this one Ball Bounce. This app is going to have a ball moving around the screen. The ball will be what we call a sprite. In App Inventor, ball and image sprites can only live on a canvas. Before we put in a canvas, there's a setting we need to change on the screen properties. It's small but very important for an app with a canvas. Go to the screen properties, scroll down to the bottom part of the properties list, and uncheck scrollable. This makes it so that the screen will be a fixed size and will not allow the user to scroll up and down. OK, now drag out a canvas from the drawing and animation drawer. Notice that it looks very small. Go to the Properties pane of the canvas and change the settings for both width and height to Fill Parent. That opens up our canvas quite a bit. Now drag out a ball sprite and drop it onto the canvas. It's kind of small. Let's make the ball a little larger. Go to the Properties for the ball and change the radius to 10. OK, for now that's all we need. Time for the blocks. Click on Ball 1 to view its blocks. Pull out the Ball1.flung. Yes, we named it flung. It may be a silly word, but it is grammatically correct. Now, think about what we would like the ball to do after it is flung. We'd like it to move in the direction of the fling with a speed that matches the strength or quickness of the fling gesture. The way to do that is to get the parameters of the fling gesture and to plug them into the ball's heading and speed. First, pull out the setter blocks for the ball's heading and for the ball's speed. We want to set the ball's heading and speed to the heading and speed of the fling gesture. There's actually a really easy way to do this in the flung event handler. Pull out the get heading and plug that into setball1.heading. Pull out the get speed and plug that into the setball1.speed. So now we have the event in place that will handle when the ball is flung by the user. This means that the user uses their finger to flick the ball. That's a flick like a pull cue, not like an Angry Bird launch. If you are connected to your phone, then you can test your app out. How easy or hard is it to fling the ball? Does the app respond the way you expect it to? One thing that you'll probably notice right away is that when the ball hits an edge, it gets stuck there. We have to tell the ball to bounce off the edges. Back to the blocks. Go to the ball blocks and choose the when ball one dot edge reached block. Go back into the ball blocks and drag out the call ball one dot bounce block. Notice that this bounce block takes an edge as an argument. Where can we get that edge value, do you think? Well, how convenient. The edge reached event handler reports which edge was reached. Mouse over that edge parameter and you'll see the get block for it. Pull that one out and plug it in. That's all. Test your app out again. Hey, look, the ball bounces off the edges now. Pretty cool, huh? OK, so now we've got a very basic game app going here. But this could be the start of a whole bunch of different games. The App Inventor website has a tutorial that shows you how to make this into a mini golf game. You could probably also imagine a game of pool or a pong game. This is just the beginning. Challenge yourself and make this even more engaging and fun. We're out of time on this tutorial, so if any of you out there would like to extend your Ball Bounce app, go to our website for more great ideas. Definitely worth checking out. In our next and final tutorial, we're going to show you how to make an app called Digital Doodle that lets you make pictures on your phone. Sounds great. OK, we're out for now. See you soon.